Corey Gabriel here with Fabrice Santoro. Fabrice, thank you so much for your time. Mid 30s, you're still playing. Do you still enjoy it as much? Yeah, sure. I still enjoy it to play in big machine and the big course. Um, sometimes I would like to spend more time at home. But uh, traveling is part of my job, and I choose that 20 years ago when I was a kid, I decided to be a tennis pro. And uh, you know, I have to travel every week to play some, some big matches around the world, and I, I love that. I mean, you were born in Tahiti. Do you, do you ever get back there? Not yet, because when you do my job, you can't mm -hmm. go there for one or two months. And uh, I don't want to go there for 10 days only because there's a lot to see, there's many things to do there. So when I will quit, I will take time to go there for at least a, one or two months. And spend what, one or two months on the beach or, or something else? <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I could stay on the beach for two months. I'm not, I like to move, I like to do some sports, I like to... Uh, yeah, but I will, I will rest and, uh, and visit a lot. So many Grand Slams, I think what, 63 Grand mm -hmm. Slams you've played and it's probably, you're the leader I think among the, the, uh, the players. Yeah. Uh, what does a, a statistic like that mean to you? Well, when you look at the history of the game with all the big names, like uh, all these players who played so many Grand Slams, like Andre Agassi, like Jimmy Connors and Pete Sampras, all of I mean, these big names for, for, for years and years, you know, um, I don't have I, don't win the, I didn't win the big title like them, I was not number one in the world like them, but there's one thing I did better than them, it's 62, 62 grand slam, and I'm pretty proud about that. Yeah, I would think you'd have to be proud. Was there one that stood out in your memory? Uh, out of 62, <laughs> um, I would say the French Open 2001 was a big one for me. I lost in the first round against against uh, Correja, but I beat Safi in the, in, the, in the third round, he was number one in the world and that was a, a, a big slam for me. And also I would say um, Australian Open 2006 was, was big for me too. It was a big one? Yeah, quite a final, a big one. What, I mean, you know, people will see tennis players and say, oh, you know, they're out there hitting tennis balls on a tennis court in a match for a couple of hours. But obviously we know that there's so much more that goes into creating a good tennis player. Do you, do you enjoy the training? The training? Mm -hmm. I, and I, I train less than I used to do because I have to take care of my body. I need to rest. I need to, uh, to work with my physio a lot to, to be able to play some big matches. But I love the game. I like to to play tennis, to really play tennis. And uh, when I'm on the court, I just, um, around these people, we, we paid to see a good show and uh, I'm trying to give my best, uh, first to win, but also to, uh, to, uh, to give a, a, good, a good show to people. Now, Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi, you know, they hated to play you. Mm. <laughs> but they beat me a few times, huh? Yeah, maybe they beat you a few times, but they hated to play you. Did you enjoy playing them? For me, the best matches are when I play the big names like Pete, like Andre. Uh, like today, when I play Federer, even if he beat me, I'm so happy to be on a big court with huge crowd. And uh, I still play in tennis for those matches. And um, in the past, when I look at all seven matches I played against Pete, or six matches I played against Andre, it was always a, a lot of fun. I think Pete gave you the, the nickname of the magician, didn't he? I heard that, yeah. Did you, do you like that nickname? Uh, coming from him, it's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best I can, I can have, yeah. Now, I think your father played football. Yes. Why didn't you take up football? Actually, my first sport was soccer, was football when I was a kid. I started to play football, but after that, I, I thought it was, uh, I was feeling better on uh, individual sports. So I chose to play tennis and uh, regarding my character and uh, I think it was a better choice for me. And I think your other passion is Formula One, car I, racing? I, I like Formula One, I, I don't follow as much as I used to do, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm so impressed. It, you can do. Would you like to, to get into a Formula One car um, and, and get it around a track like you know, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix or something like that? Would you ever dream of trying something like that? Not driving, because I won't be able to do it, but be, to be a passenger seat, you know, with a, with a, with a big pilot, with a big guy, a big name, I would be very happy to do it. Who, who's your favorite driver? Um, I, used to, uh, I used to follow Schumacher a lot. I, was, uh, I know I, I like the big, 
names in sports we win a lot like Tiger Woods, like Schumacher used to do it, like Federer. Uh, because I know that you have to work so much to be able to stay at this level and when you are when you are the one to to be beaten it's so difficult. So I guess you know, being a sports uh, an a-, a sportsman, an athlete yourself, I guess you can understand and appreciate what they've had to sacrifice, what they've had to do to get to the level that they reach. reach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They have to. Um, there's so much pressure. They have to work a lot, I, and every um, you know, if, when you look at Federer, every time he, go, he goes on the tennis court, he's the one to be beaten. And everyone, he, every player wants to be number one. But he's the one for so many years now, and uh, it's it's so difficult to stay there. Very difficult. No, I understand you've got quite a, a collection of tennis rackets. Not anymore. Actually. No? You know, I give you here and there one to find it, and not much anymore. But I, I, I like the story of the game, you know. I was very proud last year to go to the Hall of Fame in Newport. I mean, this is a tremendous place. It's right? beautiful, isn't it's it? Beautiful, beautiful. Every, every professional player should go there. Once. Yeah. I mean, I've got a, a collection of rackets, but the rackets that I've been collecting over the years are all the broken ones from the players, and I've got them all over on the walls of my garage. Oh, okay. But I also heard that you'd love to, to create a tennis museum. I lost the power. Uh, no, we'll, we'll pick it up anyway. I also understand you'd like to create a tennis museum. Not anymore, because I, I, I think I don't have much rackets anymore, but... I, I like the, um, you know, I think it's, it, when you, are, you do this job, it's, you have to be informed about the history of the game and know what's going on. And um, I, li- I, like to, um, I like to follow them and to read some stuff about things. And I was talking to Jonas Bjorkman and I was talking to Leander Pays and, you know, Leander says as far as when he wants to finish playing is, you know, it's anybody's guess. He still enjoys it and all that. And Jonas has got another year or, or two. What about yourself? How much more? How much longer do you want to play? When I passed 32 years old, I decided to play year by year. So now I start 2008. I want to play until Bercy. And today I can tell you there is a big chance, maybe 90% of chances that I will stop at the end of the year. But who knows? I can't be 100% sure. You know? I, I, like, I, like to, I like to play the matches a lot. Even a few days ago I lost to Blake. It was a very difficult match physically. I was close to winning, finally I lost. But I enjoy it so much. And Fabrice, last question. What do you want to do when it's time to hang up the rackets? I like to sleep in my bed first. <laughs> <laughs> For a few weeks. Uh, I like to uh, spend more time with my daughter too, uh, and we see what I'm able to do. You know, when you do this, I'm 35 years old. I play tennis since 29 years, so it's a huge part of my life. And um, I, will, I will try to find a big challenge to be able to do something uh, at a good level. It's going to be tough. It's a good, it will be a good challenge anyway. Mm-hmm. I need, I need challenge. Yeah, yeah, I should just ask, you mentioned your daughter, did she, did she change your life when she came into your life? Yes, completely. You know, um, when, when she was born, anyway, I, I understood that playing tennis was only an easy thing compared to the responsibility of being a good father. And uh, I'm trying my best every, every day when I'm with her. And uh, yeah, for sure, now I do my calendar regarding her school holidays. Uh, I was not in Indian West last week because I want to spend 10 days with her. So I play Miami now. I'm going back home to, to stay with her. And um, yeah, she's, she's doing my calendar. <laughs> That's wonderful. Fabrice Santoro, thank you so thank much you. for your time. Thank you.